Hi, everybody. This is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements 2021, although these principles also apply to earlier versions of Premiere Elements and I assume every subsequent version, too. We have a slideshow here on our timeline, and the way you bring a slideshow alive, of course, is to create pan and zooms across a photo. I might, in this particular case, on this photo, I might start with a close-up of these two women, and then pan back to the wide shot and show the audience the entire picture. And Adobe has added a tool to the program to help you do that, but unfortunately, they've tweaked it and kind of screwed it up. <laughs> and it seems that the more they tweak it, the worse it gets. I want you to tell me your opinion of it. Maybe you like the way it works. I don't particularly like it, and I want to show you what to do about it. So we've got our slides here. Each slide, each still photo is, by default, five seconds long. So I'm going to select this slide or this still photo on my timeline. Go over to the toolbar on the right-hand side of the program. Select the toolkit and open up Pan and Zoom. Now, the first time you do this with a photo, the program takes a couple of seconds and it analyzes the photo and it looks for faces in the picture. And you see what the program has done or this particular tool has done. It's located faces all right and it's given us a pan and zoom from one face to another to another. So it starts with a close up of this woman, goes to a close up of this woman, goes to a close up of this man, and we don't see anything else in the picture except their faces. Check this out. I'm going to click the preview button. This is what their pan and zoom looks like. Close up of her. Close up of her. Close up of him. In my opinion, you miss the entire picture. You get none of the context of the entire picture. You don't even get the dog in there. Also, look what it's done. Look at the little timeline here. The green represents a pause. The blue represents the pan and zoom. This means that with each one second pause on a face and a five second motion from face to face, our little five second still photo on our timeline is now going to be 13 seconds long. If you're happy with it, God bless you. <laughs> there you go. You've got it. If you're like me and you don't like that at all and you want to have a little more control over your pan and zoom, here's what I recommend you do. Go down to the settings button here in the lower left of the panel. And on this settings panel, first thing I want to do is get rid of the hold time. That's the pause on each face. I'm just going to select it. Right now it's set for one second or 29 frames. I'm going to change that to a zero. And our pan time, four seconds and 29 frames. That's a five second pan time. That's fine. We'll click OK. And then I'm going to click the reset button here in the lower left. And once I do that, all of those pre-selected frames go away. Now I can create my own frame. So I'll move the playhead back to the beginning. I'll click add new frame. And I want to start with the close up of these two women. So I'm just going to drag on the corners here. That's my initial starting frame. You can see a little keyframe has been added right here to the beginning of the timeline. Move the playhead down to the other end of the timeline. We'll create a new keyframe or add a new frame by clicking this button in the lower center of the panel. And now for our final keyframe, we'll widen out and get as much of the picture as we can. Now we've added no more time to our slideshow, right? Or to our slide. It's still five seconds long and we have a nice natural pan and zoom. I'm going to click the preview button now. Now we've got from a close up to a wide shot. We see everybody and everything in the picture. To me, this pan and zoom tells a story, right? This actually has meaning to it. The other focus frames does not. Now there used to be ways to actually turn off this feature completely in Premiere Elements so that you could just do all of your keyframing here manually in Pan and Zoom, but that's been taken away. And in current versions of the program, you have to come in here and reset each time to get rid of the face frames and create your own custom Pan and Zoom. So let's click Done. We'll go back out here to our timeline. There's our beautiful Pan and Zoom. Very, very nice. There are other ways to do it. Of course, I actually prefer to work with manual keyframing, something I show you how to do in my tutorials and, of course, in my book, Step by Step. Uh, there you have much more control. You aren't limited by a number of things you are limited by here in the Pan and Zoom tool. But if the Pan and Zoom tool kind of doesn't do what you want it to do, 
and you find it a little bit annoying and frustrating, that's how to undo it. Now, if you want to know more about this program, more about the tools in the program, check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepicks.com. Want to know everything about Premier Elements? The moviepicks.com guide to Adobe Premier Elements is available at amazon.com. I'm Steve Grizzetti. I wrote the book and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.